Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Thursday the 8th of February. I'm reading morning prayer, morning prayer on Thursday in Ordinary Time from the Church of England. You'll find the words at the Church of England's website, at Aremus Daily Prayer, amongst their other offerings, downloadable as an app for Apple or Android device, <coughs> and in the book, Come Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England, towards the beginning, after prayer during the day, in the morning and evening prayer during Ordinary Time section. You're welcome to joining the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, or by Zoom, code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, same place, and the audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel in due course. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's blessing, God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you, O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you, then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God our own God will bless us. <clears throat> God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Psalms appointed this morning are numbers 14, 15 and 16, which you'll find at the back of the book. Psalms 14, 15 and 16. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and abominable in their wickedness. There is no one that does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the children of earth to see if there is anyone who is wise and seeks after God. But everyone has turned back, all alike have become corrupt. There is none that does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, those evildoers, who eat up my people as if they ate bread and do not call upon the Lord? There shall they be in great fear, for God is in the company of the righteous. Though they would confound the counsel of the poor, yet the Lord shall be their refuge. O oh, that Israel's salvation would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, then will it Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. <coughs> Through the greatness of your mercy I will come into your house, Lord, who may dwell in your, in your tabernacle, who may rest upon your holy hill, whoever leads an uncorrupt life and does the thing that is right, who speaks the truth from the heart and bears no e deceit on the tongue, who does no evil to a friend and pours no scorn on a neighbour, in whose sight the wicked are not esteemed, but who honours those who fear the Lord, whoever has sworn to a neighbour and never goes back on that word. Who does not lend money in hope of gain, nor take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never fail, never fall. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Through the greatness of your mercy I will come into your house. The Lord is in my right hand, I shall not fall. 
Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. <clears throat> I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me, yet at my right hand I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices, my flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life, in your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. <coughs> Scrolling past our first reading to the Canticle of Song of the Covenant, turning back in our books to Morning Prayer Thursday. I have given you as a light the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Genesis 32, our first Bible reading, we start at verse 3. Genesis opens the Holy Scriptures, if you have both covenants in front of you. So turn to the very beginning, before Genesis. Within the book of Genesis, the large numbers at the head of the paragraph are the chapters. We're looking for 32, Genesis 32. And we're starting from the verse number three, and the verse numbers are the small numbers within the text, as I'm sure you've guessed. Genesis 32 from three. Scroll back from the canticle we read a moment ago if you're following electronically. Jacob sent messages before him to his brother Esau in the land of Sir, the country of Edom, instructing them, Thus you shall say to my lord Esau, Thus says your servant Jacob, I have lived with Laban as an alien and stayed until now, and I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male and female slaves. I have sent to tell my Lord in order that I may find favour in your sight. The messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, <clears throat> and he is coming to meet you, with and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and divided the people with him, and the flocks and the herds and camels, into two companies, thinking if Esau comes to one company and destroys it, then the company that is left will escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, O God, who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I will do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I am afraid of him. He may come and kill us all, <clears throat> the mothers with the children. Yet you have said, I will surely do you good, and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted because of their number. <clears throat> so he spent that night there, and from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau, 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams, 30 milk camels and their colts, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. These he delivered into the hand of his servants, each drove <clears throat> by itself, and said to his servants, Pass on ahead of me and put a space between drove and drove. <clears throat> he instructed the foremost, When Esau, my brother, meets you and asks you to whom do you belong, where are you going, and whose are these ahead of you? Then you shall say they belong to your servant Jacob, they are a present to my lord Esau, and moreover he is behind us. He likewise instructed the second and the third, and all who followed the droves. You shall say the same thing to Esau when you meet him, and you shall say, moreover, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he thought, I may appease him with a present that goes ahead of me, and afterwards I shall see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. So the present passed on ahead of him, and he himself spent that night in the camp. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. 
and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go for the day's breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. <coughs> So, Jacob, who fled his brother for safety, and uh, after working for his, the man who became his father-in-law for two wives and for um, wages for however many years, he's now returning. And uh, he tricked his brother of his birthright. Uh, and of his inheritance, I think that's if they're not different things, but uh, oh, his blessing, that's right, his birthright and his blessing. Again, I'm not sure whether. So there were two occasions anyway where Jacob pretended to be Esau or, or um, tricks him, and uh, Esau therefore was cross and angry, so Jacob fled, and so that's why he's concerned on returning to Esau. <coughs> and uh, he's returned to Esau because uh, he'd been promised the land that uh, Esau lives on or near, so he's returning back to his land having gone back to his people where they came from for uh, kinfolk to marry <coughs> and uh, because he's concerned that Esau might kill him he uh, first of all recognised before God um, what God has achieved for him when he left he only had a stick um, so he, he sends greetings then he realises that Esau when he's told Esau's coming out he thinks he's going to come and kill him so Jacob uh, praises God, thank you that when I left I just had a stick and now I've got two companies. Please protect me from my brother. And uh, <clears throat> he then puts practical steps in place. And uh, then we have this wrestling story. So what we can learn from that, I guess, is that we can do as much as we can as if it relied on us, but pray as much as it relied on God. I think there's a sort of a saying not dissimilar to that. <clears throat> Prayer comes first in this instance, and I guess that's a sensible approach. And then the practicalities uh, follow. But uh, we shouldn't just be so heavenly minded there'd be no earthly use and uh, leave it all to God and wait for the, what we expect God's answer to be because we might literally miss the boat if we're waiting for rescue from a flood. <coughs> um, and or not to rely entirely on our own strength. There's a good balance, it seems to me, here, putting God first and then doing what we can. And then this is a, an ancient story, a bit like the Gilgamesh flood epic that was circulating amongst the ancient peoples. And this is included in the scriptures here. Not just a sort of as a random, weird experience, but um, the suggestion that this is God incarnate wrestling with Jacob, as he has. Jacob's name means thief, and then his name um, Oh no, you have to wait till tomorrow for that. But um, Jacob uh, says uh, asks the name of uh, the person. But he's saying, why are you asking my name? And that's a very kind of rabbinic, you know who I am, don't you, really? <clears throat> and uh, it's obvious that he does, because he calls the place Peniel. I have seen God face to face, yet I have survived. So that's sort of a physical expression, uh, sort of a, a parable or a metaphorical expression, allegorical expression, the wrestling he's had earlier on in the text that we've just read, wrestling with God about his future and what he should do. But uh, he puts his wives and uh, family first, in this instance, uh, rather than himself. This is a sign of a change of attitude and a change in the man. <clears throat> and uh, how his physical disability, uh, how that contributes to his mission and his ministry, rather than detracts from it, perhaps increases reliance on God that he might otherwise not have had on that prayer element rather than his own practice. <clears throat> so moving on to Titus 2. Um, Titus is in the letters section of the Greek scriptures, so the last third, if you turn to the back of the book of Revelation, move back towards the beginning, um, Titus is in that little set of, however many there are, six or so, um, letters from <coughs> uh, <coughs> Paul to various people, or from the people that the letter is attributed to. So we're looking at the letter of Paul to Titus, and the second letter. Very short text, you might need an index to find it. If you're following it electronically, scroll onto it beyond the canticle we read earlier. 
But as for you, teach what is consistent with sound doctrine. Tell the older men to be temperate, serious, prudent, sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. Likewise, tell the older women to be reverent in behaviour, not to be slanderers or slaves to drink. They are to teach what is good, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be self-controlled, chaste, good managers of the household, kind, being submissive to their husbands, so that the word of God may be not, not be discredited. Likewise, I urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects a model of good works, and in your teaching show integrity, gravity, and sound speech that cannot be censured. Then any opponent, opponent will be put to shame, having nothing evil to say of us. Tell slaves to be submissive to their masters, and to give satisfaction in every respect. They are not to answer back, not to pilfer, but to show complete and perfect fidelity, so that in everything they may be an ornament to the doctrine of God our Saviour. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and to the, in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. It is he who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself the people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. Declare these things, exhort and reprove with all authority, let no one look down on you. So it's not dissimilar to our <clears throat> first reading, only we've got the practical first. So um, <clears throat> we've got Paul instructing these new, this new community of believers, a new faith developing. Um, how do we behave? And so there are instructions for older men, younger men, older women, younger women. And uh, I guess this might be just from observance from the culture that they live amongst. And uh, so we might think to ourselves, what do, how do we want to present ourselves as church? Um, should the younger people be simply interested in all those things that their energy and their zeal and their ambition um, generates as with all young people? Or should there be something specific about them? What about the, the older people who perhaps are tired and worn out and grumpy and bitter? Um, perhaps the, the lack of achievement they have uh, gained in their lives compared to others and how the young people are today and so on. Would, do we as church want to present a different image and that's kind of what Paul's instruction is here particularly perhaps if we come to Christian faith from a different background where it is normal to be um, cross angry negative bitter um, ill disposed to the other um, and so this is kind of developing a community it may be that certainly in our own day there seems quite a stratified community and younger people don't necessarily meet older people. So there are people in towns and cities uh, and elsewhere bringing older people into contact with younger people. Um, here we've got an open the book Bible reading group that goes into schools. And that's where we're getting sort of um, granny generation uh, into contact with grandchildren generation. Um, to the benefit of both. And then the last paragraph um, talks about what God has done for us. That if we live like that, then we'll receive the benefit gave himself for us, that we, he might redeem us from all impurity, iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own. So it's a bit of God's work and a bit of our work. And uh, that will be noticed by those amongst whom we live. Uh, we'll improve as people, be the better people for it, and uh, God will be chuffed. So to the responsory back in uh, morning prayer on Thursday, ordinary time, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. The Song of Zechariah. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
He promised a God to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. <coughs> Make a lover keeper, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the beginning of this day and we thank you for those uh, stories of uh, faith and how that involves us in prayer and practice and how both, through both, you grant us favour uh, in the eyes of our potential enemies and our communities, bringing them into relationship with you as you have brought us. And we thank you for that privilege and we pray that you will use that today. World Council of Churches, prayers today, this week for Andorra, Italy, Malta, Portugal, San Marino, Spain, Vatican City. We are thankful for the many and diverse waves of migrants who have come to those lands, and we pray for a stable government that end corruption and serve the common good. <coughs> Christian Action Research and Education. There have been a, has been a fourfold rise in anti-Semitic incidents in the UK, over 60 of which have affected schools and pupils since last October's hammer attack on Israel. <coughs> Please grant protection to our Jewish neighbours and help police and others to show solidarity <coughs> and to condemn that hostility. And add our prayers that uh, justice will be done for all peoples in the Middle East and uh, I'm afraid that is a negative consequence of the Zionism that uh, is uh, beleaguering the otherwise peaceably coexisting ethnicities and religions in that place, sponsored and empowered by the military and financial weight of uh, US and uh, UK people, if not certain communities within those nations, the Christian colonialist West whether it's for oil, nor for the establishment of the canal, nor for any other purpose. Um, may Allah be merciful. Green Christian. Scrolling through to find today's entry. <coughs> A Ghanaian English entrepreneur has designed an electric bike that is transforming short-range transportation Andy Corbley writes in Good News Network, a woman has set up a company called Wahoo that assembles bikes by hand and they can travel 80 miles on a charge. <coughs> so a delivery rider for a couple of companies, Glovo Bolt, can cover a day's work without refueling. <coughs> so we thank God for that initiative. Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our concern for the environment. And so we pray with the Pope. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. The Pope is an Anglican, but he's written a prayer about creation, which I serialised through the week. You're all quite right. Benefice cycle of suggested things to pray for. Um... On Saturdays we pray for, uh, no Saturdays, yeah we do pray on Saturdays, but it's not Saturday, Thursday, um, we pray for farmers, we pray for a healthy relationship uh, for farmers with their land and uh, with their um, suppliers and markets. We pray that we as uh, consumers have a healthy relationship with farmers and the land and our own bodies and food <coughs> and that uh, the intervening um, elements, institutional organisations, wholesale, retail, marketing, um, Government will likewise have uh, a healthy relationship um, with food, with uh, their voters, <coughs> with their people, their markets, with their suppliers. <coughs> that whole web will be healthy for the environment and uh, for humanity as uh, farmers and food producers make their contribution <coughs> positively and negatively in that arena. And we thank you for our people looking after our churches, our church wardens and others on the committees, particularly today in St Mary Chedison, St Andrew Wissett, St Peter Spexel and St Margaret Linstead, uh, namely Joe as warden at Chediston, Geoffrey warden at Wissett, 
um, Keith Warden at Spexel and uh, Malcolm Warden at Linstead. Uh, we've got electoral roll names at Wissett, and I'll include Claire. Also, um, Edward, Henry, Eve, Nick and David, Jennifer, Valerie, Diana, Susan, Helena, Hugh, Richard, Kathleen, Thomas, Anne, uh, Spexel, Fred, Betty, the Beryls, Caroline, Karen, Barbara, Melissa, Roxanne, Patricia, David, Janet, Liz Craig, Elizabeth, Burke, Francis, and in Linstead, Janet, Sheila, Angela, Irene, Celia, Margaret, Derek, Pauline, Heather. Uh, we thank you for these, and uh, we pray that you draw others in to each and every one of those churches. Everyone could do with another, each one could do with another um, church warden. Uh, three of them could do with another treasurer, and uh, the secretaries would be probably quite happy in each to step back to. Uh, <clears throat> certainly one of those. And uh, so we pray for improved relations between the uh, church community and the wider community <clears throat> in those villages, that there no longer is a distinction and uh, that the community will step up to look after the church as they do look after the church, the village halls and uh, the other village facilities as they volunteer on the village council. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Thursday morning collect. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube. <coughs>